Yeah, okay. So, hi, I'm Sönke. I also don't have time to talk about myself. Um, the most important thing is that I'm also one of the co-organizers of Serverless Days Hamburg. So, um, for me, serverless is actually a bad name, but because it's always about what it's not. And there's always then this, but there are still servers. Yeah, and there are still servers, so I would rather call it serviceful. I guess this term was coined by Patrick Du Bois, who was also invented the term DevOps, so it looks like he's good at inventing names. Um, and to show you what I mean with um, serviceful, um, let's compare a serverful to a serviceful organization. And for that, I did my own spectrum, because it looks like it's really cool currently. Um, so let's um, compare the serverful um, company mindset versus the serviceful company mindset. So how do they look at public cloud? The serverful, com serverful company, they see public cloud more as a threat, and oh my god, evil vendor lock-in, and so they only use the low-level building blocks of the cloud, um, like compute storage network. And the serviceful company, they see public cloud provider as a partner, and they fully embrace the entire ecosystem. So they use all the services um, provided by the cloud provider. Um, in the value and cost mindset, it's like on the serverful company, they're like, ah, oh, we can build something on our own with our own people so we can save money. Whereas the serviceful company, they're more like, wait until you make photos until it's complete. Um, we rather use and pay a cloud service so we can focus more on customer visible work. Um, how do they see uh, hosting and maintaining your own stuff? For the serverful company, it's more the default. And for the serviceful company, it's the last resort, so they really try to do as long as possible use um, more managed services. And how do they see people and labor cost? Um, the serverful company, they say, ah, oh, we have our people anyway, so can, they can also do the maintenance. Whereas the serviceful company, they say, hey, um, we, our people could shift from doing un undifferentiated heavy lifting to more customer visible work. And last but not least, Owning, and I guess this is the most important one, um, where there's the difference, um, owning infrastructure and code for serverful companies is an asset and strategic advantage, and for the serviceful company it's just a liability or a necessary evil. So now you can take the photo because now it's complete. Uh, um, so serviceful is a way to focus on customer value, for me at least, and so now as a company, you could say, hey, we want to get more customer focus, so let's try to be more serviceful. So how do you get from serverful to serviceful? So how's, how could the way be? And I now have some hints for you how your company, your serverful company, um, could get more serviceful. So I call this generic strategies. So first is embrace the ser serviceful mindset. Second is you have to have a knowledge strategy uh, third, you have to find ways to foster unlearning of outdated behaviors and techniques in your organization. And this fourth, last but not least, is that you have to adjust the incentives in your organization. So first, embrace a serv serviceful mindset. What does it mean? Don't own what you don't have to, like in, in one sentence. Um, so owning infrastructure, code, and software is a liability, not an asset and focus on customer visible work. So this is, for me, the serviceful mindset. Um, second is, have a knowledge strategy. And what do I, do I mean by that? Um, ask yourself what differentiates you as a company, where should you focus, and what to learn and what to unlearn in your company. Um, so what is like um, relevant knowledge for you, and what should you insource or build in-house, and what should you outsource, and there's a great tool which I really like for this, and this is called Wortley Mapping. Who knows it? Ah, a few. So really look this up because this um, not only you then have like a really cool way to talk about what's going on in your company, but it also um, shows you what to build, what to do in-house, and what to outsource. So for example, here um, it would say that compute and web server could be outsourced. Uh, but I don't have time to go, I, I would really like to go into this deeper, but I don't have time. Um, so, 
the third is that we now um, have to find ways for unlearning in organizations. And the problem is that in organizations, um, there's so much inertia that, um, um, that um, there are many barriers to organizational change and unlearning. And here's a small list of, um, of um, barriers that you will see as, um, as you want to do organizational change. So one is the not invented here syndrome, I guess, is very, um, very, um, very public and um, also something like the Dunning-Kruger effect that peop um, like incompetent people are too incompetent to see their own incompetence and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so there are like really many barriers and the problem is that in organizations you cannot force change because if you try to force change to people, what they do is they will resist even more. Um, or as uh, Peter Zenger states it, the harder you push, pushes the system back. Um, but as a company, what you can do, you can provide an environment for the change to happen. And so you can provide alternatives to how things have been done in the past. And then you have to wait. So one example is that you can give employees time resources for, for example, cloud and serverless or serviceful uh, courses, training and certifications. So you just show them, hey, we really want to do this change. Please do your courses, do your certifications, try it out, here's the time. And then you also have to, because um, um, then you also have to change the incentives, so how people are measured. There's also a nice, um, so Eli Goldred says, tell me how you measure me and I will tell you how I behave. This is actually um, yeah, a really good um, sentence to explain um, what happens in organizations or uh, with people. So praise and reward serverless and serviceful solutions in your organizations. Um, prefer the ser servicefulness. Here's another range uh, spectrum, which I also um, s uh, have stolen from one AWS slide. So, but you can do this for any public cloud provider. And here is the more serverful world, so prefer these services. It does, does not mean that you shouldn't use this, but you should try this first and then go back to more serverful services if you need to. For example, um, if you need containers because of some, something, then really try this first and then go um, more to the left. So um, reward behaviors and solutions that lead to the least amount of owned code to solve a business problem. Um, so this is actually also one of my um, um, definitions of serviceful or serverless that you try to um, reduce the amount of code to run your business. Um, and the end, like the end game is always zero code, which you will never achieve, but always thrive. You could always thrive toward it. And so training and right incentives are a powerful change enabler, I would say. So recap, to become a serviceful company, embrace the mindset, know what to keep learn and unlearn, foster the learning and unlearning by providing alternatives, and change the incentives to reflect the serviceful mindset. Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, um, the, all the stuff, I'm standing on the shoulder of giants. Read through this list. I will also share the slides if you are interested in the stuff there. So I did not invent anything here by my own. I invented the spectrum, but um, also standing on the sh um, shoulder of giants. Thank you.